The area of a trapezoid, um, kind of like the area of a parallelogram, looks a little bit daunting at first, and that's because the shape is really kind of wiggy. I mean, we got we got sort of two triangles here on the ends of the figure, and we usually don't have the dimensions of those two triangles. And then we have another rectangle in the middle, so it's almost like a composite shape where we'd want to find the area of two different triangles and the center triangle and then add, or center rectangle, and then add them all up. But it doesn't have to be that hard. Um, the area of a trapezoid is really very much like the area of a parallelogram in that it's really a rectangle that's been sort of bent out of shape. If only the base on top and the base on the bottom were the same values, all we'd have to do to find the area would be to take the base times the height like any other, any other parallelogram. So what we're going to do then is find the average of the base on top and the base on the bottom. In other words, we're going to take away from the bottom whatever amount of distance is required to make them equal. So if, for instance, this was, say, 10 down here and this was 6 up here, if I pulled two units off the end of this one, oops, not 20, just two, if I pulled two units off the end of this one down here and then kind of sliced that off and turned it around, like so, and this isn't going to fit exactly because I'm just guesstimating here, but if I did that and then spun that section around and flipped it over, I know there's a flip over thing there somewhere. Select. I don't know how to do that one. There's a way to flip it over. Heck, if I know how to do it. But anyway, if I took that and put it up here, well, I don't need to flip it over. What am I talking about? I'm being an idiot again. I hate that. If I took that little bit of triangle and put it up here on top, then I end up with a parallelogram again, right? And I haven't changed the area. I've just sort of moved this little bit of area from down here and put it up there on top. So the area of this figure here, and I'll need to obviously have a line that comes down here to sort of finish off my shape. The area of this figure here would be the same as the area of the original figure, right? Well, this figure is a parallelogram. That's easy, base times height, yeah? So what we had to do then was find what distance the new, and of course this new length from here to here, now I took two off the bottom, so that's six plus two, this new one up here is now eight and this was 10 minus 2, so it's also 8. So the trick then is to find out what this new measurement is, what that average base would be if I took some off of one side and added it to the other until they matched, what would that new amount be? Well, like I keep saying here, that number is just the average of those two. So if I took base 1 and added it to base 2, and then divided that total by 2, that's finding the average, right? You add up the total and then divide by the number of entries. So the area of a trapezoid formula is just the average base, base 1 plus base 2, times the height. And that's what this formula up here is, right? It's 1 half, so here's our divided by 2 part, multiplying by half is the same as dividing by 2, times h, there's our times h, times the base 1 plus the base 2 base 1 plus base 2, right? So 1 half of the two bases multiplied by the height. So there's our formula. And you can look at it either way. You can say that the area of a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2 over 2 times h, or you can say that it's 1 half of h times base 1 plus base 2. Heck, you could even say, thanks to our good old friend, the Commutative, uh, commutative law, you could say it's one half of base one times base two, or base one plus base two, sorry, times h. We can do it in any order we want. So really not that difficult. Just find the average of your two bases and multiply that number by your height and you're good to go. Let's take a look at the examples.